Yeah, so what's going on, man? It's a fever dream. Oh, this is really well like a fever very well dream, said. man. Very well said. Congratulations, by the way. Thank you. Fantastic. I'm in, I'm in, a, I'm in a rare club, because I've seen it twice. Very good. Yes, yes. Very good. So what'd you think? <laughs> oh, man, I loved it, man. It was like, I mean, the first time I watched it, I got to watch it at home in the morning, just right. completely fresh, by myself, like, right. just got a chance to absorb it. Then I got a chance to watch it with an audience. So I think that's the best way to do it. Once where you can just zone in, the second mm -hmm. time and see what the audience thinks. But no, I totally love it. How'd you guys get this movie made? It seems like something that would be impossible to sell. It was. I mean, and that's why I didn't sell it as an idea. I didn't pitch it. It wasn't an assignment. So I wrote it by myself. And it was my own personal like creative Rubik's Cube. I would pick it up and put it down through many years. You know, I wrote those first 40 pages in like 99 or 2000 and I put it away. I was like, no one will ever make so that movie. Been a, just been what, a 10, 10 years, year 10, 12 years. It was in a drawer. It scared me. I was like, it'll never get made. It'll suck my life away. I know it will. And it did at times, because it almost got made a few times with me directing it. It kept falling apart and falling together. And it's like, so ultimately, it kind of came back to so life. So where, where, where did the original idea come from? What were you doing? Where were you? How did this idea well, there's two, Well, there's, there's two kind of like um, ways into the movie. You know, the first is I got sober when I was 25. So okay. like the idea of recovery and like everything that I kind of gone through in my personal life before and after that was obviously in the forefront when I first came up with that idea. And then I'm a nervous flyer. So that thing and the idea of how much control you have to cede when you get on a plane to like whoever is behind that door flying the plane. Cause like if I'm driving, if we're in a car, I'm driving. Like I wanna drive. Right, wanna so I wanna be in control. So it's like when I get on an airplane, I'm not in control. It's like I've, I've put it over, you know what I'm saying. Oh yeah, oh, no, I fly a lot. And I, I used to be a great flyer, but now I'm a nervous wreck. But <laughs> I do look my pilot in the eye. I've done that for the past two weeks since I've seen the movie. <laughs> hey, my man's clear. <laughs> We're good, you know? No, I mean, but it made me rethink, though, because, no, seriously, I've flown probably a gazillion times, and I've never once thought about the condition of the pilot. I right. just take it for granted. It's going to take off. We're going to land. I'm going to do my thing. Right. And now I have, like, second thoughts about that, thanks to your very well-written <laughs> screenplay. Now, were you crushed because you didn't get a chance to direct it? I mean, Robert Zemeckis is a great director, but you would have probably loved to have a stab at it. Well, yeah, I, and I think that, you know, there was part of me that knew there was very few people who kind of could make the movie go. And okay. I, I just, at a certain point, so I just you knew understood that it, the grand scheme. I'd rather see this thing get made than get hung up over me directing this or not. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Smart man. Smart man. No, and, and, the, and the truth of, you know, for all the things that didn't go right with this movie through 10 years, there was this moment in time in 2010 where everything suddenly went right for a tiny little pocket where it's like Denzel read the script and said, I'm going to play this part, like declared it. And at the same time, Zemeckis read it and said, I want to make this movie. And then the third thing was that Zemeckis said to me, I want you to come with me. So I got to be there the whole time and really, like, he was very collaborative and let me have a real voice in it. Very cool. Give me your worst personal experience ever on a plane. I was I had to go. You know, uh, no, I'm with you. I mean, I, I feel like I have more than one, but the one I think I of when you worst. ask, no, no, I'm, well, the one I'm thinking of is I was flying from San Francisco to Los Angeles. We had flown up and we're flying back on the same day. And all day the weather was getting worse and worse and worse. And I knew that I had this, like, and they, you know how that, that airline, those little, like, commuter airlines, it's like they have flights every 30 minutes. Right. And I get there, and the airport is packed. Everybody has like a forty-nine dollar ticket. You know what I mean to get from, <laughs> you know, to get from San Francisco to Los Angeles. And I'm like, and the weather is storming. And I'm like, ah, oh, and everyone wants to get on or off the plane, so it's crowded. And I got on that plane, and it was people were howling. I mean, it's like the plane was so violently pitching. We were in the midst of like an awful rainstorm. But the reason they they took off because there's minimums. So the pilot makes the decision ultimately. If it's under the minimums for weather, for wind, for wind and rain. They can take off. 15 minutes later, clear skies. But those 15 minutes, man. 15 minutes of hell? Oh, man. All right, well, cool. Well, this is 120 minutes of pleasure. Thanks, so man. Thanks a lot. I nah, appreciate man. that. Now, there, there might be a lot of people in the African-American community that don't like this character, but they better not act like that person doesn't exist because like you said they right there in the house or they up the block or they uncle boo boo they literally, <laughs> you, the they literally off called the lunch they, like, li <laughs> <laughs> they literally called you into the principal's office like rob yeah. no it's crazy